Hello people, back again, and we're going to go back and talk about a game I haven't talked about in a while, and that's Ultra Street Fighter 4. Originally talked about when it originally was announced it was coming out. Uh, for those who don't know, Ultra Street Fighter 4 is set to come out for the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 in June, and then coming out for Windows PC in August. Now, if you already own Super Street Fighter 4, you can basically upgrade to Ultra for $14.99. If you want a standalone, like, you know, copy of the game for like console it's going to be basically 40 bucks and if you want it on pc it'll be 30 30 I mean, more likely than pc you're going to get digitally i'm pretty sure here they're right they're not going to release it physical but they have ads and they'll announce some more interesting things about this game uh, one of the more, first things is training mode fight request now normally when you're on you know you're waiting for an online challenger or someone to you know accept your challenge uh, to play an online match on Street Fighter, you would just sit there and wait. Well, now what they've done is, while you're waiting for someone to accept your challenge, you can basically practice in training mode, where basically, you know, you, as they say, they say, no more sitting in lobbies or competing arcade mode over and over again. Stay warmed up, practice combos in between online matches. So, maybe there's a combo you're not good at, or maybe there's one you forgot. You can go into training mode while waiting for someone to accept your challenge, and then when you actually have someone accept it, and then you'll practice what you want to do. So when you go in there, maybe you can use it against them. Now, one of the most interesting things that they announced back in January was that basically uh, you'd be able to select clips from uh, your online matches log and upload them directly to your personal YouTube channel. Uh, well, now they've they've announced that this new feature also extends to offline matches. Now, uh, how you do this is offline is basically uh, with the offline battle log. Uh, once enabled, your online matches will automatically be archived, and you can play them back with your favorite online matches. And, you know, of course, then you can choose which one of those you want and upload them to your YouTube channel. And one of the reasons they said about this was, you know, remember having like you had this amazing match with your friend, and you always wish you could show it to people. Well, now you'll be able to do that if you have this enabled. That basically you'll be able to have all your matches recorded and basically pick ones you want to upload online. Uh, you know, so that you don't have to always, uh, I, you know, maybe you forgot to turn on your re video recording software to record that match, so now you won't have to do that. Uh, it is interesting they're doing it with this game, saying this is, you know, the consoles this is coming out for is because they're old generation, and, but honestly, a lot of people don't consider Capcom somebody who would do something like this because they've done a lot of stuff uh, to make people angry over the uh, last sort of couple of years. But Street Fighter is a very important game to them. It has a very loyal fan base. <laughs> and I think one of the things that is finally tipped, it seems recently, with like Mario Kart 8 also having YouTube stuff in it, is that it seems that the publishers have finally tipped the opposite way with YouTube. I think for a while they didn't know what to do with it. They kind of got angry as in this is our product. You, what are you, you know, you, what are you, you're making money off it. You're doing this with it, you know. It, an old school thing where companies controlled everything about their their product, and this was a new school thing and a new thing that they just didn't know how to handle a lot of them, didn't understand the legal presence of it and, and didn't understand what it meant. But the thing they should learn from, like AKA the music industry's issue, is the more you fight your consumers, the more you're gonna lose. I mean that it's it's nice that you want to have the old controlling message thing, but in today's world, <clears throat> where anybody can get in front of a camera. And talk about anything. Fighting, most of the time when you go fighting a fight like this, you're only hurting the people who love your products, who just want to show how good it is. You're not hurting the people who are, don't love your products, who are, you know, who want it. You're just hurting the people who, who love your products and want to show how good they are. That's what you ultimately do when you do something like this. And it seems to, a lot of them seem to have turned the corner. Like, I know a lot of people bash Nintendo, and obviously you're going after videos and stuff, but I don't hear anybody actually giving... Nintendo props for the fact that in Mario Kart 8 you'll be able to upload stuff to YouTube. Is it that should be somebody people should be who diss them should be out there congratulating them now, but they're not. Nintendo is this weird thing with people. They just they seem them on a bash and they don't seem to want to give them credit where credit's due. Just like a lot of these publishers have seemed to turn the corner on YouTube. They realize if you've seen a success like a game like Minecraft, completely the most success of that game is entirely due to YouTube. Uh, people seeing the gameplay of it, see what you do in that game, and wanting to play that game. Call of Duty, whether people want to admit it or not, when Modern Warfare 2 came out, YouTube played a big part in people 
seeing the online matches and getting really excited for it. A lot of Call of Duty games after that. And people end up buying it because they've seen the online matches and, and that kind of stuff. If you can get, I think they're realizing, if you can get a lot of people on YouTube to play your game and show other people, because a lot of fans today, they don't go to the video game websites. They may look at their view as a guide, but they really want to see how average people, you know, what they think of the game and actually see them play the game on whether YouTube or Twitch or whatever. And they realize now that people are going there to see this stuff and they have to embrace it because if you don't embrace it, your game gets buried and no one's going to go get it. That if you can get your, your, your game out there all over a Twitch and a YouTube, people are going to more likely see it and more likely buy it, especially if everything about it is more positive than negative. Now, Street Fighter has a very loyal fan base. You know, unlike like it has a loyal fan base. They play Street Fighter, that's the game they play. It's their game, they're going to play it, and that is their game. Street Fighter is it. They eat, sleep, and breathe Street Fighter. So, and obviously the fight tournament scene and everything else, that it only makes sense for them to get their game out there. So, what do you think about the fact that they've added these new stuff to Ultra Street Fighter 4? Were you interested in getting it? Are you interested in getting it now? Do you wish more games to kind of add the YouTube feature to it? I think we're going to head down the road between what the consoles are doing with editing and with games that eventually, you know, you won't have to have the really expensive. I mean, you will. If you want to do certain things, you're always going to have to have editing software because nothing, the, the level of what you can do with that stuff, video editing, is never going to be in a game. But if you're someone who wants to just simply crop, crop it real quick and post it up, then these, these kind of tools would be set for you. Anyway, guys, like always, love to hear your opinions, and I'll talk to you guys later.